good. We swear the witness and Mr. Boyle is here. It's not just where our testimony about giving this matter to the truth, but it's good enough to the truth of the act. Please be seated, sir. Would you state your name and spell your last name, please? Joseph Gabrish, G A B R I S H. In the early morning hours of May 27, 1991, you were a City of Milwaukee police officer, is that correct? That's correct. You were on duty and your partner has already testified he was John Balserzak, is that correct? Yes, it is. You and he were riding in the same squad, Squad 36? Correct. I'm, not, I'm going to short circuit right to the point. There came a time at or about 2 a.m. that you were dispatched with a report of a naked male in the vicinity of North 25th and West State Streets, is that correct? The dispatch, as I recall, it was a naked man down near 25th and State Street. And you and he went in that squad to that location, is that correct? Correct. As you pulled up there, you saw a group of people standing at the mouth of an east-west alley that opened off North 25th Street, is that correct? That's correct. You pulled into that alley with your squad lights on? The headlights of the squad car were on, yes. And you got out of the car? That's correct. What did you do after you got out of the car? What did you see and what did you do? I exited the car. I was the passenger of the car. There was a group of people in the alley and they were all pointing to a white male and a second Asian male who was naked uh, just east of our location in the alley. Um, did you get out, when you got out of the car, did you approach anyone in particular? I walked towards uh, the two individuals that were east of us in the alley immediately after exiting the squad car. Will the, were the two individuals next to each other or in close proximity to each other? Yes, they appeared to be walking together. And what did you do then? Um, we separated the two individuals so that we could question them as to what was going on. And uh, your partner, Bolserzak, took Mr. Dahmer and you took the Asian male? Uh, I talked to the Asian male, correct, and my partner talked to who, who we later found out to be Mr. Dahmer. And would you tell the jury what, if anything, you said to the Asian male, and what, if anything, he responded to you? I asked him uh, several times what his name was, uh, his, his date of birth, trying to get informational questions about the goings on from him, and he did not give any type of communicable response to me. Was he making any noise at all? Did you get any response at all from him? He was basically mumbling, but it was nothing that could be understood. Right. Were you close to him at this time? Yes, I was. Were, were you in front of the headlights on the squad? Yes. What observations, physical observations, did you make of him at that time? That he was uh, an Asian male, that he appeared to be approximately 19 to 20 years old. Um, that uh, regarding any injury, the only thing that I noticed that he had a scuffed knee. He appeared to be in somewhat of an intoxicated state. Do you recall if you smelled any alcohol on his person? Yes, I did. And uh, in terms of the intoxication, can you tell us how his eyes were? Can you describe his eyes in any way? His eyes just appear to be glassy. Have you seen persons in such condition before? Yes, I have. And did you undertake, or at least as you spoke, continued to speak with him, did you form an opinion as to what his situation was? He appeared to me to be intoxicated. Do you know whether the intoxication was from alcohol and or some other drug, if you know? I do not know for sure. Now, how long did you proceed to talk with him in that fashion? Um, I don't recall looking at my watch at all, but if I approximated it, approximately five to ten minutes. Was he standing during this time, or had you placed him in some particular position? He both stood and leaned on the front of the squad car. Did there come a time that fire personnel approached the scene? Yes, uh, shortly after our arrival, they pulled up. And what did you observe them do? They exited the truck and came into the alley. I believe there were three of them altogether that actually, actually exited the truck. And these were firefighters? Yes, they were. Uh, do, do, do they sometimes receive a call of a man down? Is that sometimes relayed to the fire department for, with concern that there might be an injury to someone? That's correct. You don't know precisely what happened, but do you think that's what happened? I, I believe that's, that's usually the standard. If there's any type of uh, indication of an injury, the dispatcher 
from uh, our communication system. We'll relay that to the fire department. And you believe they responded to a dispatch such as you had responded to? That's correct, I believe so. Uh, did you have any conversation with those firemen or fire people? I requested a blanket from, uh, I, most of my conversation was to the fire lieutenant. I requested a blanket from them so that we could put it around the Asian male. Do you know that fire lieutenant's name? No, I do not. Uh, was such a blanket produced? Yes, he sent a female firefighter back to the fire truck and she brought a yellow disposable blanket, at which time she opened it and handed it to me and I placed it around him. And uh, the Asian, did you wrap it around the Asian male at that point? Yes, I did. Were you able to secure a name from the Asian male? Not from him, no. Were you able to secure a date of birth from him? Not from him, no. Were you able to secure an address from him? Not from him. Were you able to secure, other than what you observed of him, were you able to secure any information from him uh, by any statement he gave? No. What happened then? The fire department looked him over briefly, um, at which point I suggested that he had either been drinking or was intoxicated. They continued to look him over and then they left. The fire people left? Yes. Okay. And what, did they get on their truck and leave? Yes. All right. Who takes care? If there is injury, who's responsible for that? The fire department is. Right. So they looked him over, they got on the truck and left? Yes. All right. Had you observed, as they were observing him, had you observed any particular injury on him other than the knee? No, just the scuff to the knee. What happened after the fire department left? Uh, my partner came up to me and told me that he had obtained information from the white male to whom he was talking to and basically that the Asian male's name was John Hamong and that he was uh, 20 years old and that he had been staying with him for the last, I believe he said two to three weeks. Had been staying with whom? With Mr. Dahmer. He also had obtained Dahmer's name at that point. And did he mention that what, what the, uh, the white male's name was? Uh, yes, uh, Jeffrey L. Dahmer. I believe he also had a date of birth, but I don't recall what that is. And what did you, what if anything did you and uh, your partner decide to do? At that point, um, my partner asked the Asian male some of the similar questions that I had been asking him in an attempt to get a response from him. Um, there still was no response. He, he did not respond to Balzerzak either. Right. right. Um, my partner, Officer Balzerzak, then uh, asked the crowd if anyone there knew the Asian male or, or knew what was going on and no one responded to him at that point. Had you had any communication from persons in the group while you were attempting to talk to uh, the Asian male? I had uh, communication briefly when I got there. Someone suggested that uh, the Asian male and the white male may have been in a fight. Uh, later on I believe that same person came up to me and said she had further information. I requested that she stood back momentarily until we could stabilize the situation and get it under control and that I would be with her as soon as I could get to her. Uh, after Officer Balzerzak attempted without success to get any information from the Asian male, what if anything did you or he do? At that point, Officer Balzerzak um, went back and talked to Mr. Dahmer again for a short period of time and shortly after that he came back to me. We decided to continue our investigation by way of going back up to the apartment as my partner had found out that uh, the Asian male had been there previously and that's where his clothing was. And what did you then do at that point? We then uh, proceeded, well another squad drove into the alley from the opposite way at that point and one of those officers uh, had come out of the car and into the alley and was with us. What was his name? Officer Richard Perupkin. Uh, at that point, Officer Perupkin and myself and the Asian male and Jeffrey Dahmer began walking toward the rear of the apartment. Uh, my partner, John Balzerzik, uh, followed us in the squad car. 
All right, you, would that mean that you walked uh, further east? Uh, this alley we're talking about is an east-west alley that parallels and is south of West State Street. Is that correct? That's correct, but it also uh, swings around and uh, continues south for a, about a half a block and then comes out again on the 25th Street. So you walked east to that until you came to the alley that parallels 24th and 25th Street, is that correct? That's correct. Then you walked south down that alley towards Dahmer's apartment building, is that so? That is correct. Is that apartment building 924 North 25th Street? I believe it is, yes. City of Milwaukee? Yes. In Milwaukee County, Wisconsin? Yes. So the, you walked, were you walking next to, or what exactly was your position uh, as the four of you, that is, for Officer Probkin, yourself, Mr. Dahmer, and the Asian male. The four of you walked up the alley southbound towards Dahmer's building, is that correct? That's correct. All right, where were you physically as you covered that walk? I was on the right side of the Asian male. Uh, Officer Probkin was on his left side, and Mr. Dahmer was next to Officer uh, Probkin, still on his left side. Did you engage in any conversation with Dahmer as you walked up the alley? Yes, we did. And was that about the first time you were talking to him? Yes, it was. What, if anything, was said by him, by you, or Perubkin at that time? Well, we walked back to the apartment. Mr. Dahmer spoke of the crime in the neighborhood and how bad he thought it was. He said he was glad that the police were in the neighborhood and uh, that there was a need for the police. Um, I believe he may have been smoking a cigarette during that time. As we got near to the apartment building, it was the rear of the apartment building, obviously, um, he spoke of the need for extra locks on his apartment and that he had a security system because of the, the crime and the nature of the neighborhood. Did, did he indicate where his apartment building was as you walked up the alley? Yes, he did. Uh, and did you enter that apartment building from the rear door off the alley? I think it's off a little parking area, actually, by the time you get up to the door and the steps. But it's, it's in the rear by the alley, yes. Right. And did he have a key for that back door? Yes, he did. All right. And did he enter then into the, uh, the apartment building, the hallway in the apartment building? Yes, he did. And during this time, can you describe what, what your observations you made of the Asian male? He basically just walked with us. Um, he didn't indicate that anything was wrong. Um, Did he stagger at all, anything like that, if you recollect? He may have had some trouble walking um, due to the fact that he had been drinking, but he basically walked on his own and we just guided him and helped him keep the blanket over himself. And did he then go in the apartment building as well? Yes, with us. And we all basically went in at the same time. And, and then Balserzak got out of the car and, and followed you? Yes, in fact, I think uh, we waited for him for about five seconds, and then we all went in together. Uh, as you went down the hall, the, then you came to Dahmer's apartment? That's correct. And what did he do when he got there? He was still talking about security systems, and he unlocked the door and let us in. And uh, did you follow into the apartment building, into the apartment? Yes, we did. That would mean eventually the, the yourself, Officer, Officer Perubkin, the, your partner, Officer Balzerzak, Mr. Dahmer, and the Asian male. Is that correct? That is correct. You've come to know the name of that Asian male, have you not? Yes, I have. And this is subsequent to the May 27, 1991, you, come, you came to know his name. Is that so? That's correct. And what is his name? Cataract Sympathophone. When you entered the apartment, what did you observe? Basically that it was a well-kept apartment, um, it was neat, um, just a normal apartment. Did you make any observations as you walk in, into what room do you come? It's sort of a combination living room area and then there's a kitchen off to your left. And did you see any bedrooms or bathrooms off the, off the main room? There were two other doors. I've since come to know which was which. I didn't know then, but they were those doors were closed. Right, this would be a be you've learned to come to know that that was a bedroom door and a bathroom door. That's correct. And are they off to the right from that main room? Yes, they are. Were those doors are open or closed that evening? They were closed. Right. After you entered, you made general observations that it was a neat apartment. 
What else did you observe? <clears throat> that there was a blanket on the couch in that main living room area, and that there were clothes next to the blanket, and that's where Conorek went and sat down. Did he, had he said anything, Conorak, up to this point? No, he had not. Did he say anything after he sat down? No, he did not. What did you do then, or what did you observe then, or what was said then? <clears throat> the next thing that happened was that Officer Perupkin, uh, he had walked the farthest into the apartment, he had found a picture on a coffee table or a table that was in the apartment, and it was of the same Asian male, Conorak. And what did he do with that picture? He held it up uh, to Officer Belzerzek and myself, who were standing near to Mr. Dahmer, and we asked Mr. Dahmer what it was, and he's, he's, his response was that everyone is into something or everybody has got to be into something. You, did you see one or two pictures, if you recollect? I just recall that he held up one picture. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 69 and State's Exhibit 68. Can you recollect, first of all, do you recognize either of those pictures? I recognize Exhibit number 69 as the one I saw that day. This is not the exact photograph that I saw. It was a Polaroid photograph that I saw that day. Does that appear to be a copy of what you saw? Yes. Right. And. What is depicted in that exhibit that you say you recognize? It's the Asian male in the same apartment posing in a black pair of swimming suits. And is he laying somewhere or is he standing in that exhibit? He is standing up. And what is his clothing? Just the black swimming suit. And uh, is he, does he appear to be awake or his eyes open? He's awake. He's standing looking directly at the camera. Did you recognize the person, when Perupkin held that up, did you recognize the person depicted in the picture? I recognized it as the same person that we were there with. And that is the Asian male? That's that correct. you've come to know as Connor X and phone? That's correct. Did anyone undertake to examine the clothing, uh, to look for anything in the clothing that was seen on the couch? That's correct. While we were in there, I observed that Officer Belzerzak uh, uh, went over to the couch where the clothing was and that he went through the pockets and patted it down. Was any, did, was any identification found for the Asian male? No, there was none found. Do you recollect any discussion at that point about the identification of the Asian male? No, I do not. You were now in a better lit circumstances, I assume, than in the alley. That's correct, there were lights on in the apartment. Right. And did that better lighting afford you a better opportunity to examine the person of Conor into some phone? Yes, it did. Did you make observation of any other injuries on his person other than the knee about which you have spoken? No, I did not. What happened after you saw the pictures, the picture, the one picture that you observed? We, uh, we like I said, we asked Mr. Dahmer what it, what it was, and he said that everyone was into something. And we depicted that to mean that they were friends or had some sort of relationship. And then what happened? <clears throat> After that, um, we again attempted to talk to the Asian male. Um, and we also talked to Mr. Dahmer. We told him that if the type of activity would continue and the police had to be called again, that we would have to take some sort of action. All right. When you say the type of activity continued, what activity were you speaking to? That if the Asian male would run out of the apartment again without clothing in an intoxicated state that we would have to issue a citation or take some other sort of legal action. What happened then after that communication? Mr. Dahmer assured us that this was a friend of his and that he would take care of him, that there would be no further need for the police or any further disturbance whatsoever. And what happened then? After that, um, we told the Asian male, who we know now as Conor Axempus Phone, that we were leaving. He showed no sign of any stress or didn't show any, uh, didn't try to signal us or say anything to us about leaving. We felt the situation was fine, that basically our investigation had been completed at that point. We 
we're assured, like I said, by Mr. Dahmer that uh, no further activity would continue and we left the apartment. We went back to our squad and we circled the block uh, again to make sure the area was clear and that there, were no, there was no further need for the police in the area. You had indicated, and going back to when you were in the alley, that you had asked a lady to stand by, that you, had to, you were going to talk to someone else first. Did there come a time that you looked for that lady? As I stated earlier, Officer Belzerzik made a plea to that crowd while we were out there um, to see if anybody had anything to tell us. There was no response at that point. That was also our purpose of circling through the alley again to see that if, if there was anyone out there who had any further information for us, and there was not. Now, had you ever seen Connor Axton to some phone before? Not to my knowledge, no. Had you ever seen Jeffrey Dahmer before? Not to my knowledge, no. I believe I've asked you to identify him in court. Oh, Is there a stipulation on that? In terms of the, would you, the, would you describe the, how you observed Mr. Dahmer? You first really started talking with him as you walked up the alley. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, can you state whether he was calm or not, what you thought of him from the conversation you had with him? He appeared to be a normal individual. He answered all our questions. He was polite. Give us no reason to suspect anything of him at all. He was very cooperative with us. And when you were in, in the alley and then later in the premises itself, uh, did you make any observation of his clothing, how he looked, what his appearance was? His uh, appearance was, uh, he wasn't tattered or anything like that. It was normally dressed. Uh, he was wearing a pair of glasses on that particular night. Um, just appeared to be normal, nothing, nothing out of order. In your discussions with him, as you went up the alley and then in the, bill, in the apartment, did he appear to you to be suffering any delusions? Not that I was aware of, no. Did he appear to you to be suffering from any hallucinations? No. Was there any incoherence in his speech? No. Was he unable to relate his thoughts to one another from your observations? Yes. Was he able, did he appear to be in a stupor in any fashion? No. Did he appear to you to be any way out of touch with reality? Not that I could tell, no. That's all. Dressing I'm sorry, just one additional question. Did you smell anything in the apartment? While we were in the apartment, I realized that my partner doesn't smell anything because he has allergies, but there was a slight smell, um, which I equated to that of a bowel movement or somebody had just gone to the bathroom. So you smell that, your partner has some kind of what? He has allergies, That's seasonal allergies, of? and he's on medication for that seasonally. And I assume because of that reason, he didn't smell the same thing that I did. That's Balzer's act you're speaking of. That is correct. Right. Thank you. I just have a few questions. The area that you patrol is um, not very far from this area, correct? About a half mile. And it is a composite of all kinds of different folks, uh, all ages, all colors, uh, all minority groups, uh, male, female, everything, correct? That is correct. Now, within that grouping, uh, Asians are the smallest of minorities, are they not? I, I don't know that much about demographics in Milwaukee, but I encounter few Asians. Very few. I would say so, yes. And the young man, were you able to pinpoint his ancestry any more than just Asian? Did you think him to be a Laotian? Did you think him to be Chinese, Vietnamese, or just generally Asian? Just of Asian descent, I am. You were of the belief upon seeing him that he was consistent with the age uh, that you reported earlier, 18, 19? Uh, correct, 19 to 20 years old. Uh, there was nothing that anyone brought to your attention that caused you to believe different than that, correct? That's correct. Now. If, if Mr. Dahmer reported remembering a police officer looking with a flashlight at uh, Mr. Sintemason, might that have been you? There were a lot of uniformed people on the scene between the fire department and myself. I know for a fact that it was not John or I that had a flashlight out there. 
But you certainly were looking carefully to see if anybody was injured, right? Yes, that is and correct. You had seen somebody injured, you would let the fire department take over. Or well, you would they, were, seen they were actually in charge the whole time of the medical aspect of it. Okay. In other words, that, that would have been a serious thing. You know, that's one of the things you look on at every scene. That's correct. Right. Now, Mr. Dahmer, obviously this young man wasn't talking, wasn't making any claim, wasn't making any noises that were accusatory towards Mr. Dahmer, correct? Correct. And at no time did Mr. Dahmer tell you, uh, I don't know who this fella is, I am just uh, happened to see him here and thought I'd help him out. He never told you anything like that. No, he told us he was his friend. The opposite. Correct. Volunteered to tell you he was his friend. Yes. And when you all started walking back to the apartment, he didn't say to you, that's okay, I've, I can take over from here, I don't need you. He, he never tried to persuade you not to come forward, correct? No. So now he walks back with this uh, young man and, uh, and ends up in his apartment with three Milwaukee police officers. That is correct. All in uniform. That is also correct. You saw nothing, nothing suspicious about Mr. Dahmer at all, did you? No, I did not. And you saw no injury to young Mr. Sintimus Symphone either, did you? Just the scrape on the knee, which would have been consistent with possibly a fall. It was your belief that they were operating, as Mr. Dahmer told you, in some alternate lifestyle of their own? I believe so, yes. That's what you saw and that's what you thought? Yes. Now, you couldn't have walked in any of those other rooms, could you? No, we could not have. So what you were doing, you wanted to make double sure that everything was okay and that he was telling you the truth. That is correct. Uh, if it's reported that uh, Mr. Dahmer recalls somebody checking out for identification, do you recall who that was in the, in the trousers of this young man? It was Officer Belzerzek. And did you recall Mr. Dahmer saying uh, he never carries identification? Do you recall anybody? Do you recall Mr. Dahmer making that statement in your presence? No, I did not recall hearing that. But it doesn't mean he didn't say it. It just means if he did, you didn't. I, I didn't hear it if he did. Yeah. Once you saw the pictures, you became convinced he was telling you the truth. Well, it wasn't only the pictures. It was the totality of the information. Well, I understand. The but totality of everything that we learned while but, we were there. But he told you that this was his friend and there was pictures of this young man in his apartment. That's correct. Right. So you're sus you know, when you went back to the apartment, you wanted to make sure that there was... Um, well, let me ask you, in your wildest dreams, could you have charged him with any criminal offense or any kind of violation of ordinance? No. Um, he gave you his truthful name. Yes, he did. As far as you know, he gave your partner his truthful date of birth correct there were how many citizens out there other than public servants i would say 10 to 15. they were all in the general area within I, within the general area yes maybe 10 they had to seen a naked young asian just as you had yes they had seen mr dahmer go up and collect that naked young asian at it about the same time as you were coming on the scene. That's correct. He was seen by three members of the Milwaukee Police Department, right? That's correct. He was seen by personnel from the fire department. That's correct. He showed you up to his apartment. Correct. And he convinced you that you could go about your business, that he had everything under control. We were convinced that all was well. And there wasn't anything that you saw that could for one moment have caused you to believe that there was any problem at all, correct? There was nothing. That's all. Thanks. Redirect? No, sir. You may step down, sir. Thank, Thank you. I do. Please be seated. Please state your name, spelling your last name. Kenneth Moiler, M-E-U-L-E-R. How are you employed, sir? I'm a lieutenant of detectives for the City of Milwaukee Police Department. 
And how long have you been so employed? I've been a lieutenant of detectives for the past four and a half years. I've been employed with the Milwaukee Police Department for the past 17 and a half years. And were you so employed as a lieutenant of detectives on the morning of July 23rd, 1991? Yes, I was. On that date, did you become involved in the investigation of the homicides which are the subject of this case? Yes, I was. And on that morning, did you also have occasion to go to Jeffrey Dahmer's residence at 924 North 25th Street? Yes, I did. And is that location in the city and county of Milwaukee, state of Wisconsin? Yes, it is. First, Lieutenant Moyler, I'll show you what's been previously marked as Exhibit 19 and ask if that's a photograph of Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment or a portion of it as it appeared that morning. Yes, it is. And what portion of the apartment does that depict? It shows his front apartment door is open, and it shows a sliding door which is also open, which heads back to the bathroom and bedroom area. And how many locks appear on the outside door? There are two locks that appear there. There's the common entry lock, uh, it's in the passage, and then there's a deadbolt lock. And are those the locks that were there on that morning? Yes, they are. I show you now what's been marked for identification as exhibit. 76. Ask what that is. This is a picture of the northwest corner of the living room, apartment 213. Is that a fair and accurate representation of the way that area appeared on the morning of July 23rd, 1991? Yes, it is. In that portion of the picture, or the apartment, was there anything that appeared to be a surveillance camera? In the upper corner of the room would be the northwest corner. There's a bracket with a what appears to be a camera mounted to the bracket. Did you, or was a receipt for a dummy camera also recovered from Jeffrey Dahmer's during the investigation? Yes, there was. And it was recovered from inside the apartment? Yes. I showed you some marked identifications, exhibit 75, and asked what that is. This is a receipt dated January 18th, 1991, uh, from SOS Electronics, 1957 West Hampton, in which a dummy camera was purchased. And there's a customer signature, Jeffrey L. Dahmer. Lieutenant Moyler, I'm going to now show you what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 77. Could you tell us what that is, please? This is a picture of the living room. It's now instead of the northwest, we're now facing northeast in his living room. It's the northeast corner of his living room. And is that a fair and accurate representation of the way that area appeared on the morning of July 23rd, 1991? Yes, it is. And that was the morning that Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested? Yes. And police entered and searched his apartment? Yes. Show you now what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 78. Tell us what that is. This is a picture face again in, in his living room, and just as you uh, would look into the kitchen area, it's the west wall in the apartment of 213. And what, if any, items does it show? It shows a freezer, it shows several boxes of Soilix on the floor. Next to it is a table with a large kettle and empty can of beer and some empty bags of chip and some other empty beer cans. In regard to the freezer during the search of Mr. Dahmer's apartment, was a receipt for such a freezer found?
I believe so. What's been marked for identification as Exhibit 79. What's that? The, it's, there are several papers in here. The top paper is a receipt from the Sears store for a freezer. The receipt is dated May 24th, 1990, and it shows that a looks like a 10.5 cubic uh, foot freezer was purchased and later delivered. It was delivered on 52590 to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Also show you what has been marked for identification as Exhibit 80. Could you tell us what that is, please? This again is a picture of the apartment. Uh, it's taken from the living room, looking east into the hallway where the sliding door was leading to the bedroom and bathroom area of the home. Is that a fair and accurate representation of the way the area appeared on the morning of Jeffrey Dahmer's arrest? Yes, it is. And Exhibit 81? This is a picture in the living room. There was a alarm system set up uh, on the wall. This shows the where everything was plugged in and where the controls were. And did that was that alarm system set up in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment on the morning of his arrest? <coughs> yes, it was. And is that a fair and accurate representation of the way it appeared? Yes, it is. Was a receipt found for a camera from Black's camera shop? This receipt, uh, a copy of it was obtained from Black's camera shop. This was not from his apartment. This is a receipt for a Polaroid camera, which is obtained on 52190 from Black's Photography. And, and also, inside the apartment, was there an advertisement for two items that were found among Mr. Downer's personal effects? Yes, there was a, um, an ad with a couple uh, things. It's, it's on top, it says Science Sources. Underneath there it says chemical and lab equipment, and then they give a description of some chemicals. You want me to read this, or? Um, all right, why don't you tell us what the chemicals are? Okay, it says chemicals and lab equipment. Chemicals, small or large quantities for your convenience, glassware, scales, microscopes available, and then it says send five dollars to a company. And then below that it says, Anatomical products catalog, charts, models, skeletons, free catalog, and it again gives a number and a company to call. And what state's exhibit is that? Uh, state's exhibit number 83. In the course of the investigation, did you also obtain Jeffrey Dahmer's telephone records? Yes, we did. Concerning Jeffrey Dahmer's telephone records, have you reviewed those records? Yes, I have. And referring specifically to the date of July 10th, 1991, were there a number of phone calls to various companies? Yes, there was. Did the investigation indicate what those companies were? On July 10th, 1991, there was four phone calls made to uh, commercial or industrial barrel type companies. Uh, one call was made at 10.03 a.m. to Grief Brothers. It's a company in Chicago, Illinois. I believe that's pronounced Greif Brothers. Greif Brothers. Uh, at 10.09 a.m., a call was made to uh, an industrial chemical company in Milwaukee. At 10.30 a.m., a call was made to a Southside Barrel Company in Milwaukee. And at 10.31 a.m., a Another phone call was made to a Southside Industrial Container Corporation in Milwaukee. Also, were there any phone calls made to the Chicago Police Department? Yes, there was. And when did those occur? There was two calls made on July 3rd, 1991 to Chicago Police, one at 7.03 p.m., one at 7.27 p.m., and there was a third call made on July 4th, 1991 at 8.19 a.m. 
and from the investigation, uh, that was around a period of time that Mr. Dahmer had gone to Chicago? That's correct. Finally, Detective, we've referred to a particular type of sleeping pill or tablet that Mr. Dahmer used in these offenses. Did the investigation reveal a number of prescriptions being filled, uh, um, either prescriptions being made out for Mr. Dahmer and indeed other prescriptions being filled at local pharmacies? Yes, we did. We obtained several records regarding that portion and, of the investigation. And these are all for the same type of sleeping tablet? Yes, they are. Could you start in 1986 with how many prescriptions he received? 1986, he received three prescriptions. One was on June 6th of 1986 for 15 tablets. A second one was on June 20th, 1986 for either three or 30 tablets. A third prescription was on July 25th, 1986 for 30 tablets. Those were all from a doctor whose office is in the South Side or West Dallas, uh, Wisconsin, near where Jeffrey Dahmer's grandmother lives. Dr. Carl Olson previously testified to filling a to writing a prescription for Mr. Dahmer. Did you check about where and how often that prescription was filled by Jeffrey Dahmer? It was filled on 18 dates. Uh, 16 of those dates, there was a prescription for 30 tablets filled at a Southside pharmacy, uh, West Dallas, Wisconsin. And then there was two prescriptions of 60 tablets each filled at a pharmacy <coughs> in the downtown or Marquette area of the city of Milwaukee. Could you give us the dates of the filling of those prescriptions, please? Yes, the dates, uh, the first 16 are all for 30 tablets. 213 213.87, 217.87, 4.10.87, 5.15.87, 7.1.87, 8.14.87, 9.11.87, 12,30,87, 3,5,88, 5,28, 10,7,88, 2,10,89, 3,25,89, 5,27,89, 3,30,90, and then the next two are for 60 tablets each, 412 of 90 and 521 of 90. After that time was a prescription, according to the investigation, obtained from yet another doctor? Yes, there's two other doctors. Uh, <coughs> one is obtained on 91590, a prescription for 60 tablets. That again is on a, from a downtown or Marquette area pharmacy, and that was from a doctor who works at a area hospital. And the last doctor? Last doctor uh, gave three prescriptions. One is 21591 for 15 tablets. Was that 215 or 25? I'm sorry, 2591 was filled at a south side uh, pharmacy. And then 32291, 60 tablets filled at the downtown area pharmacy. And then 52491, 60 tablets filled at a downtown area pharmacy. And just also previously marked was a exhibit 20 showing the front portion of Jeffrey Downer's apartment after it was uh, empty. And it shows the front door again. Yes, it does. It also shows an additional hail off of the front door. Yes. How did that come about to be there? After the Milwaukee Police Department had emptied the apartment out, there was a hasp and a padlock put on that door while we were holding it, uh, any possible additional searches, and also 
The management requested that we do that. A padlock was then secured onto that door, and to this day that hasp is still on that door. All right, and that was not there on the morning of July 23rd, 19. No, that was, that was added uh, later that day or early the next day. I have no further questions, thank you. Oh, Judge, I would move state's exhibits that have been marked in yeah, No objection, anyway. See. I want to look at the one with the locks on the door, so. Okay, now, um, that's exhibit number 19, right? Yes. Uh, which, which uh, the officer, uh, there's a whole bunch of doors here. Which is the door if you walked in the apartment in the hall? Which door? Right here. How many, how many, uh, how many locks are there? There's two locks. There's a common entry lock or in the passage, and then there's the deadbolt lock. Okay, now if I'm inside, give me one inside with that door closed. Do you have one? No, the, the best we have is this door here you can see open and you can see the locks along the inside. Okay, so in other words, what you're telling me is that if, you, if I look at this one, 19, I see, is this the one you showed me just a moment? Yes. This one, 19, shows me point to the two locks. Right here. All right, on the right side, you're showing me underneath where it says two, one, there must be three. Yeah. three. There's two if you're outside looking at it. That's correct. And on the inside, if I'm looking at it, I'm looking at this same door. How many do I see there? There's two on the inside, and then there's a half up here on the outside. Okay, now, as I'm standing and I'm looking and I open up that door, how many locks do I see across the hallway? Three locks on that one across the hallway. So here's Tracy Edwards, who's asked the question of how many locks he sees. He opens up the door to get out of there. There's three on Dahmer's door? No, there's two on Dahmer's door. But there's a deadbolt glass. No. That goes with one of the two of them? There's only two on Dahmer's door. This one here and this one up here, and the deadbolt. Just right. those two. Okay, now tell me what this is then over here, where right your finger was. What's that thing right up there? This? Yeah. That was the hats that we put on, that the Milwaukee police put on later that day. When that door is open, how many locks are across the hall? Across the hall? It's immaterial. It's not immaterial to talk about what's on a picture that's been just, received just, in them. Just, Sorry. However, isn't it repetitious? Because I thought we, we just asked the witness that question a little while ago and he gave the same answer. Well, if, do you mind if I have him do it one more time? I do. Okay, I won't ask you to speak for yourself. The uh, fake uh, alarm system, when was that put in? Show me up. Show us where that is. When was that put in, do you know? I don't know when it was put in. It was purchased on January 18th, 1991. Okay, did he, uh, did you see the boxes uh, anywhere in the apartment that, that uh, from whence those, that fake uh, camera came from? Were they in the apartment uh, when you? I don't remember seeing the box of that. There was some box for the other, for some other alarm parts, but I don't know if that box for that camera was there. What other alarm parts? Well, there was another photograph which was introduced. Pull it up and show us. Which shows the alarm setup. And there were some boxes from that. That's the Black & Decker home security alarm system. When was that purchased, those alarms? That we don't know. We checked uh, the area Black & Decker company. We were unable to get a receipt. And we never did pinpoint the exact date of that. But you found the boxes that those alarms came in? Those boxes were found in his apartment. That's correct. Where? I couldn't tell you that. I know they were found in the apartment, but I don't know where in the apartment. So he didn't dispose of those boxes? No, he did not. How about the receipts that you found? Where did you find those receipts in his apartment? <coughs> what were these uh, receipts that found? They were, they were all found in, in various uh, spots. So there was none of them that were found in the exact same spots. So he kept receipts of, of things that he used uh, for what? Well, for the dummy alarm system or for the dummy uh, surveillance camera, for the freezer. Uh, he had several other papers in there. Were uh, his names on those receipts? Yes, there are. Was his name? Yes, his name is on those receipts. Okay. Now, we heard about all of these drugs that he was buying. And uh, 
I see from uh, what Council was reading from that she gave me to use uh, 18 different uh, times out there, right? Well, regarding that one doctor, yes. Okay. The first murder in Milwaukee, the first murder on the information, the one that's charged was what date? It would be uh, James Docks. No, yes, James Docks. I believe it was January of 1988. He had purchased had eight prescriptions of that drug of 30 tablets each, or 240 such tablets purchased in his name prior to that murder, correct? He probably had more because he had these three up here also, which were from 1986. So 340, 370, three, 400. About 415 he probably had purchased before that time. And how many more did he purchase after the, the Dockstadter? Uh, I'd have to add this up real quick. If you give me a minute. Sure. My math is correct, 555 tablets after that date. Was the aquarium that was in the fish tank in his apartment at the time that you were there in the morning of the arrest, was that in operating condition? Yes, would you like me to show you that photo? Let me see it, please. The, yes, the fish tank was operating, and it's on top of the black table, which has been mentioned earlier. Were there live fish in it? Yes, there were live fish in there. Now, does this does this picture show the amount of empty cans of beer that were found in the living room of that apartment? It shows some empty cans of beer. There was some in some other areas too. Well, how many is that shown in that picture? I see six empty cans of uh, Budweiser beer, or at least they're opened on top. I don't know if they're all empty. Were there other empty cans of beer that were found in that living room? Uh, yes, there was. How many more? Empty ones. There's another two or three across the room by that freezer there, and I believe there was some more on the floor which do not show up on these photographs. Different brands all, weren't they? Yes. Okay, so you don't know for sure how long any of them had been in there, obviously. No, I do not. Okay. So how many are we talking about at the most, assuming all of them were drank within a, that earlier evening? or any time within the 12 hours before the picture was taken, how many would it be, about 10, 12 empties? Objection calls for speculation as to how soon they would have been drunk. Sustained. How many empty cans of beer cans are there that were found in the living room according to the pictures that were taken by the Milwaukee Police Department? Okay, according to those pictures, there's eight or nine cans, but there's a, a that's these pictures. There are some other pictures that show some additional cans of beer, how empty about cans. In the Tell us how many were in the bedroom? I don't remember how many. I know there was additional empty cans of beer recovered. Is there any liquor, any, any rum, any whiskey or anything found in that living room? No, there was, I believe there was an empty bottle or near empty bottle of uh, rum that was recovered. Where was that recovered? I don't remember exactly. I, I believe it's the bedroom, but I'm not 100% positive. Okay, so you don't know? No. How about... Um, well, look, one more thing. Oh, I know that. Is there a window in that living room? A, a what? A window in that living room? Yes, there is a window in the living room. If you look out of it, what would you see? 
What does it look on to? There's another building off to the, just that, that window would be facing west, and there's another building to the west of, of the apartment. And, and if one wanted privacy in that living room, how would one secure it? Is there, are there shades, blinds, drapes, or what? There, there are some curtains there. There's the window and there's some curtains. Is that the condition that the curtains were in at the time those pictures were taken? Yes, it is. Had anybody opened them? Not to the best of my recollection. Would one be able to see out uh, outside or would you have to? Uh, uh, It'd be very up. difficult at that time of night. You could see out there certainly during the day a lot better. Um, my, my question is, was there anything blocking the view of someone if they wanted to look in and they were high enough to look in? In other words, the, the curtains were open. Well, there's a, a stand there and there's a large plant on the top of there and the window is divided. In other words, but there's no other uh, drapes that have to be open or curtains or shades to be raised? No, as far as I can see, just the one set of <coughs> drapes or curtains. And it's clear, is it not, that uh, one of the things that the police department does when they come upon a crime scene is make sure that nobody changes anything in that crime scene until it's secured, until all the proper photos are taken and all the evidence picked up. That's absolutely correct. Thanks, Lieutenant. Really? Redirect. No further questions. You may step down, sir. Thank you. It's five ten. What? It's five ten. <laughs> it is. Why? Yes, I noticed that. Are you suggesting something, Mr. McKeon? Yes, I am. Well, I saw Mrs. Boyle walk in a little while ago. I suppose she wants to take her husband into custody, so uh, we'll, we'll recess and reconvene tomorrow morning at 8.30. How's that? Courts in recess.